YouTubers. Well, I got an interesting video for you guys today. Uh, I've been doing lots of product reviews and all that, and I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and supporting my channel. And uh, uh, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, so if you're watching this, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll see my future videos. But today, I didn't want to do a review video. I just wanted to show you something that I find it pretty interesting, and you know, I didn't really know that much about it. I've seen people test sine waves and stuff like that on power inverters on YouTube and I do it myself in my, my videos, but why is it important? Why do you know reviewers test the sine waves? And I didn't really understand, you know, why you needed a pure sine wave inverter until I found this little portable power inverter. This is a rigid one and anybody that knows me knows that I'm a big rigid tools fan. I always have been. I've been buying rigid tools for 20 something years. And the reason I buy them is because it's a lifetime warranty on the tool and a lifetime warranty on the battery. Well, they call it a lifetime service agreement, but it's basically a lifetime warranty on the tool and also the battery. You don't get that. No other company gives you a lifetime warranty on a battery. So these things just don't last but a few years. So when you have a problem with one goes bad, reach out to the company and they'll send you one within usually like three days. So if you're looking for some tools, you know, it's a, uh, it's a good brand and a lot of people don't realize, but you know, uh, this company here is owned by TTI and they make Ryobi, they make Milwaukee and, uh, they make some other tools as well for, for some, uh, I, I believe they make the heart tools at Walmart. So if you're looking for some tools where you don't never have to keep buying them over and buying batteries, you know, rigid is the way to go. But I want to talk about this inverter. Uh, this here is just a 175 watt power inverter. It hooks to an 18 volt battery and it is a, a modified or step sine wave. And so this is not very clean power. So I know for a lot of people they're like, why is it important to have a pure sine wave inverter? Well, I'm gonna show you here in just a second. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. This thing is really cool. I mean, in you know, in an emergency or something, I know this last uh, Christmas I had a water pipe bust in the house and so I needed to run a box fan and this thing's able to run 175 watts so it'll run a box fan no problem so I had every fan going in the house trying to circulate that air so there wouldn't be any molds growth or anything like that and help drop that water and so I ran a box fan on this thing and so when I plugged it in I heard a nasty sounding hum the whole time that this thing was plugged into this uh, power inverter that that motor in that box fan just whined and whined and whined and it sounded like it was about to die anytime and it's not an old box fan I mean it's it's fairly new and so I'm like why is this thing humming so bad and then I unplugged it out of this and plugged it into a pure sine wave inverter it didn't make any noise just your regular noise so one reason why you need a pure sine wave inverter is number one, the hum. It's gonna drive you crazy. And also you'll notice you're getting some of that hum because that motor's not wanting to turn as fast. So, you know, anything with a motor is gonna spin slower. The speed is not gonna be as fast as if you plug it into something that is a pure sine wave. And so that is another reason. Uh, number three, they produce more heat. If you've got a, a pure sine wave, it's going to make anything with a motor turn at a, the, the normal performance uh, that it should. If you plug it into something that's a modified sine wave, it's going to turn slower and it's going to make more heat. You're only doing yourself a favor just to pay a little bit more money and you know buy something that does have a pure sine wave. We're going to test this and I'm going to plug my little jumper in here to the front of it. You guys have all seen my little jumper that I made. And I already have the box fan going down below. And I have a watt meter plugged into it. And you can see I have my probe and my gator clip on this side. And right now it says it's at 119.1 volts, 60 hertz. The wattage right now on the lowest setting on the box fan there below the table it's putting out right now 56.6 watts so we're gonna go ahead I've got the oscilloscope turned on we're gonna go ahead and probe 
this other side here and I want you to take a look right here at the oscilloscope. All right, now I'm fixing the probe, the side right here. Watch that oscilloscope. And you can see right there, that is a stepped sine wave. And it looks funny, you know, it's got those little cliffs in it that drop off its little steps basically. And that's what a stepped sine wave looks like. You know, a regular pure sine wave is gonna, you know, be like a hill. And uh, anyways, rule of thumb, if it looks like it's shooting you the bird right there, it's, it's probably a good sign to stay away from it. It's probably mad at you. So, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you get a, a step sound wave like that, then you, you definitely want to stay away from, from it. And I was probably getting a bad connection there, trying to hook it on the wires. But yeah, you, eh, having a hard time hooking on. But you, you guys can see, I mean, that that sine wave is is just janky. So I'm gonna unplug it out of this, and we're gonna keep, just keep it plugged up to the oscilloscope. You see, it's it's dead now. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into this pure sine wave inverter, and you'll be able to see what it looks like. Check that out. There's no hum. I don't know if you, the camera can pick it up or not, but there's no hum at all. And you can hear the fan is running faster. Like I said, I don't know if the camera will be able to pick up, but the noise difference when I plug it into that versus this is drastic. Um, and the performance of it is drastic. I could hear it just barely, you know, humming along through there and it wasn't performing to its potential, but when I plugged it into that inverter and it's pure sine wave, that fan sped up a lot and it quit humming. So um, you can see the proof is in the pudding right there. Look how those sine waves are just absolutely perfect. So if that doesn't answer your question right there and you don't believe me, go to Walmart, buy you one of your little plug-in cereal lighter. Um, power inverters for like uh, 20 25 bucks or something like that they're ever start brand little cheapies and you plug it in your in your in your cigarette lighter in your car and then plug a box fan in uh, and, and see that way you don't have a whole lot of money in it and you can test it see for yourself it really does make an awful noise so if, you know if you uh, are gonna be plugging in anything like a computer or something like that I would definitely go I would spend the extra money. They do make the little cigarette lighter plug-in uh, power inverters that are pure sine wave, and they're not much money. I think I've seen some on there for like $30 or $40. So, you know, if you're planning on using like a cigarette lighter power inverter or, or any kind of power inverter, always try to go with pure sine wave. Now, there is a reason for these, and that's convenience. Now, I really needed this thing when my power was out and I needed to run a fan and I had some other portable power stations going but uh, this thing is just more for convenience I would only plug in something that you don't care about burning up would I plug in a computer into this or you know um, anything of importance no but is it okay to run you know a, a fan or something yeah is it gonna make some noise is it gonna run a little bit slower yeah but you know you don't have a whole lot of money in a fan so only use a modified sine wave if you're just in a bind or if you don't care about what you're plugging in so hope this video was helpful and I know I've repeated myself a couple of times on this but it's pretty important when you go to buy an inverter pure sine wave only there's no need in, in getting an inverter that you can't plug every kind of device into uh, you might as well just get one and and go with a pure sine wave and be done with it. So, anyways, hope this video will help somebody out and explain some uh, questions that you might have had about sine waves. And until next time, guys, appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe if you're interested in the oscilloscope. Got it linked down below. If you're interested in the watt meter, the Sandwax inverter, the Rodoto batteries, any of this kind of stuff, I am an Amazon affiliate and I do make these videos to try to help you guys out and bring you some information and. You know, if you do buy some of this stuff, it does give me like a tiny bit of commission. So it's very tiny, but it's it's uh, just something to keep me motivated to making these videos because it does take time and and uh, 
have to upload them and edit them and all this kind of stuff. So I do appreciate all the support I've been getting and all the kind words from people um, uh, in the comments and all that. So anyways, talk to you guys later and see you on the next one.